Before we get into how the Russian oligarch stormed London to make it the most influential and important Russian centre outside the Russian motherland, let's talk about how Keeps, the sponsor of today's video, can help you defend against hair loss. Believe it or not, hair loss is a problem that affects over 60% of men, including this man. And while there seems to be solutions out there, finding the right one can be tricky. But Keeps is a subscription service where you can tailor an FDA approved solution for your specific stage of hair loss. Unfortunately, it's a bit late for me. Keeps can only stop hair loss, not regenerate hair, so it's best to take action in the early stages of hair loss. Most people see results in around six months. Even better, you don't have to leave the house. Once your treatment plan is established, your products are sent to you with the correct amounts for daily use. They also have online medical support because hair loss is a medical issue and you need to be sure that the hair loss is not a symptom of something more serious. But don't just take our word for it. Head to their website and check the reviews for before and after photos of real men who've had success with this program. So if this is a problem that is bothering you or someone you care about and you have a US address, remember, hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash visual politic or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash visual politic. Pay attention to this news headline because it has a lot to do with today's video. Sanctions threaten UK's position as playground for Russian oligarchs. First penalties on Russians could hit what some call Moscow on Thames. But before we dive into this matter, let me ask you a question. Do you know how many millionaires there are in the world? Five million? 10? Maybe 20? No. We are talking about more than 50 million millionaires around the world today. But perhaps the most impressive fact is that it is in the vast majority of these cases we are not talking about inherited wealth. Three out of four millionaires today are self-made. That is, they created their own wealth through their own efforts. But have you ever wondered where these people prefer to live? What are their favourite destinations of the wealthiest people on the planet? Well, I'm sure you already know where this is heading. Because yes, the city with the most millionaires in the world is not New York or Singapore or Dubai or even that little gem called Miami. It's London. The British capital has around 900,000 people whose net worth exceeds $1 million. In other words, if you go to London, approximately one out of every 10 people you see on the street has more than $1 million. And that's not all. London also ranks seventh on the list of cities in the world with the most billionaires, the mega rich. More than 60 of them live around the Thames. Surprised? No wonder, especially when we realise that London is not exactly a city famous for sun, beaches and mojitos at sunset. So the question is, what on earth is it about London that attracts so many millionaires? Okay, the short answer would probably be something like, Grant, it's obvious. That is where the money is. And in a way, yes, that is true. London is one of the great two financial centres of the world. And the other one is, of course, New York. We are talking about a place where investors from practically every corner of the world converge. <laughs> If you're a government or a large company and you want to raise a large amount of funding, you will probably be forced to visit the British capital. Nearly 20% of all international bank lending and over 12% of all listed international bonds originate in the UK. In addition, London is also the derivatives capital of the world and the centre of more than 40% of all global foreign exchange trading. We are talking about a huge hub for financial services of all kinds, a city which also houses the European headquarters of hundreds of multinationals. The so-called soft power, low taxes, along with the flexible and non-intrusive regulations have positioned London as a world epicentre of financial activity. In other words, London is a money-making rocket, and people with money like places where they can make even more money while keeping their fortunes safe at the same time. I mean, come on, I don't think we're reinventing the wheel here. What we are talking about is black and white, legal certainty, the fundamental ingredient required for a country to prosper. But let's not get sidetracked. In addition to all these factors that are key behind the success of London and in general of the United Kingdom, there is another reason that we can highlight and that so many of you may not know about, the so-called Tier 1 Visa, also known as the Golden Visa. A perhaps brilliant idea, but like everything, one that has its positives and negatives. One that has currently been identified as one of the means of punishment against Russia for the invasion of Ukraine, or rather, as one of the means of punishment against the oligarchs who support Vladimir Putin. EU lawmakers to push for ban on new golden passports, visas for Russians. Johnson government ends golden visas for Russian oligarchs. 
UK crackdown on Russian oligarchs may spell the end for London grad. Wealthy elites are being forced to choose between their wealth, their luxury, their future, and supporting Vladimir Putin. And so, visual politic viewers, in this video we are going to tell you how the UK has been trying to attract millionaires from all corners of the world and how this has become a huge headache because of the express visas granted to hundreds of Russian oligarchs. Let's get cracking. The Visa of the Rich First of all, an important note. Golden visas are not exclusive to the United Kingdom. In fact, there are 23 countries in the world that have such visas, each with their own quirks. Even countries such as Greece and Spain, which are not exactly known for being the most business-friendly places on Earth, have such visas linked to investment in assets such as real estate, stocks, or public debt. For example, in Spain, the model was implemented in 2013, with the aim of providing an outlet for many of the empty properties that remained unsold when the real estate bubble burst in 2008. In this way, in Spain, you can buy your visa if you acquire properties worth at least 500,000 euros or 547,000 US dollars. In fact, post-Brexit, this has become a good business for Spain and for the Mediterranean countries in general. Let's just say that many British people are considering buying property in order to obtain a visa to be able to do business and to be able to come and go from countries like Spain without further limitations. Britons now choose EU countries' golden visa schemes to win back their travel rights. Which is exactly the same thing that many Russians have also done. Just take a look at the Mediterranean coastline in southern Spain. So at this point, the question many of you may be asking is, why are they only focusing on the UK's golden visa? Well, you see, the truth is that few countries have had as both much success and as much controversy with this type of program as the good old United Kingdom. Since its implementation in 2008, more than 12,000 millionaires and their families have seen the British doors flung open wide for them, all thanks to the Tier 1 visa. Currently, and after several modifications and tightening of the requirements, at least £2 million, slightly more than $2.5 million, must be invested in companies registered in the country or in bonds. In addition, with this type of visa, you can apply for permanent residency within a certain number of years, a period which is shortened as the amount of money invested increases. Yes, in a way, it's kind of like buying a visa and jumping the queue on the application list. This is essentially the idea. If you bring money and investment into the UK, they open the doors wide for you. The question that comes up is, what kind of impact do these schemes have on the general economic life? Is this tier one visa beneficial to the country or not? Well, according to the British government itself, the purpose of this type of visa is to increase investment and the capitalization of companies registered in the United Kingdom. In this way, the economy becomes more competitive and job creation increases. This benefits the middle and sometimes working classes. The more companies there are, the more robust they are, and the better it is for everyone. As a result, the British Golden Visa can be considered as a dynamizing element for the economy. We are talking about a tool that has managed to attract tens and tens of billions of pounds of productive investment into the United Kingdom. Which all sounds great, doesn't it? Of course, these types of schemes also have their weaknesses. Many detractors criticize them for being a kind of safe conduct for large fortunes whose wealth may have been obtained, shall we say, not very cleanly, to say the least, in countries where the rule of law and control are conspicuous by their absence. On the other hand, they can also act as a refuge for many rich people who, thanks to these kind of visas, are able to escape from tyrants of all kinds. Be that as it may, the question that concerns us most today is another one. Guess who have been the investors most favoured by the UK Tier 1 visas? Well, it's the Chinese and the Russians. Especially the Russians. The latter have in fact become quite the headache for Downing Street. Have you ever heard of a London grad? No? Let's take a closer look. Welcome to London grad. In 2015, the Russian television channel STS launched Londongrad, a TV sitcom about an agency specializing in solving problems for Russian millionaires living in London. Sounds hilarious. A plot that, as random as it may seem to us, is not really random at all. Perhaps its storylines are not all that far-fetched. 
You see, of the approximately 12,000 holders of British Golden Visas, around 20% of them are Russians. Obviously, there's an explanation for this, and for that, you have to go back to the period from 2008 to 2015. This was a period known as, I'm not making this up, blind faith. Let's say that, back then, the program had few requirements, and above all, there were hardly any checks in place to know who the beneficiaries of the Golden Visas really were, and where their fortune came from. And of course, if we mix all these ingredients in the same shaker, Russians, millionaires and few Czechs, what do we get? We get the oligarchs. Suddenly, the British Tier 1 visa model became a magnet for Russian fortunes. So much so that in the seven years between 2008 and 2015, 85% of all golden visas were granted to Russian investors. But of course, when the requirements were tightened, the flow of arrivals from the Russian motherland slowed down a lot. Curious. Since 2015, Russians only account for 15% of the visas granted. It's still a huge percentage, but it's not quite so crazy anymore. And I'm sure none of you are surprised. It's as if many of the Russian millionaires looking to invest and live in the UK were not really happy to have their affairs snooped into. I mean, I don't know why, but it also doesn't surprise me. The fact is that there was a moment when the British government realised that something was going wrong. Very, very wrong. Basically because the country was filling up with Vladimir Putin-friendly oligarchs. And with them, the influence of Russian investments linked to the Kremlin government in the British economy was also increasing. For example, according to the organisation Transparency International, since 2016, more than £1.5 billion, pounds, that's $1.64 billion, went into the country's real estate assets have been bought in the country by high-ranking Russian officials and oligarchs linked to the Kremlin. And what is certain is that the true figure, taking into account the opacity with which these people operate, could be much, much higher. And of course, this is just one example. So you can believe us when we tell you that this, from a geostrategic point of view, is not the best idea in the world. Not to mention that many of these people are used to doing and undoing things as they please, not only related to their own affairs, but also to other people's. For them, things like the rule of law, competition or free business, well, what can I say? They sound like imperfections resulting from Western softness. It is a culture that is not exactly good for the general business climate. There are even reports that many of these oligarchs have tried to influence British politics itself. That is the same thing they do back home in Russia. You know what they say? Old habits die hard. So, in 2015, the British authorities began to change and tighten access conditions while improving checks. A retroactive investigation was even initiated of more than 6,000 golden visas. Yeah, that's not a mistake. About half of all those issued have been or are being reviewed and their holders are being investigated. There is, for example, the case of Roman Abramovich. Abramovich is a well-known Russian oligarch and owner of the Chelsea Football Club, who in 2018 withdrew his application for renewal of the visa because he was being increasingly investigated for his business dealings. In the end, he opted for Israeli citizenship. And also, we have the case of Alexander Petrachinky, a Russian millionaire who entered the UK through his wife and then was granted a golden visa, despite the fact that he was being investigated by Interpol at the time for fraud, money laundering and abuse of power. Not only Russians can be found on this controversial list. We also have characters such as India's Nirav Modi, a billionaire who is in the midst of extradition proceedings for money laundering and for allegedly perpetrating a $2 billion fraud against the Indian bank PNB. Or a bunch of Kazakh, Ukrainian and even Bangladeshi millionaires, politicians and oligarchs. Come on, the UK only accepts the finest from around the globe. The one thing they all have in common is having received their visa during the blind faith period. Now, the heightened vigilance, the investigation of Russian millionaires in the UK has become even tougher since 2018. Does anyone remember what happened in the UK that year? No? Check this out. Wealthy Russians in Britain face new visa crackdown after Salisbury. That's right! In 2018, there was the case of the poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter, both poisoned with Novichok by two Russian agents. Novichok, for those of you who don't know, is a Russian poison developed during the Soviet era. By the way, we've left you a link in the description below where we give you another video about all the details of how this poison is used in modern Russia. The point is that the United Kingdom realised that the presence of Russian oligarchs close to President Putin could end up becoming a bit of a national security problem. 
London's status as a playground for Kremlin-linked oligarchs undermines Britain's tough on Russia stance. Britain isn't the only country in which oligarchs store money, nor are Russians the only ones who park illicit money abroad. But the Ukraine crisis has led the British government to try to square the contradictions between its foreign policy and London's loose oversight. The United Kingdom was decisive in imposing sanctions on Russia. However, it was not so nimble with the oligarchs. This is something that has even been denounced by the conservative newspaper The Times. See for yourselves. 3rd of March 2022. The UK's dilatory process with sanctions is beginning to be a source of embarrassment and a matter of political concern. Remember that the money of the great Russian oligarchs linked to the Kremlin has enriched, among many others, law firms, bankers, architects and entrepreneurs in the hospitality and luxury goods sectors. Genuine economic dopamine that sometimes slows down difficult decisions. Be that as it may, it is clear at this time everything is different and that the British and generally the European playground of the great Russian fortunes may be coming to an end. There is no place for dirty money in the UK. Those back in Putin have been put on notice. There will be nowhere to hide your ill-gotten gains. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. But now it's over to you. Do you think that a golden visa system would be beneficial for your country? Should recipients be carefully filtered or should such schemes be open to any investor? Leave us your opinion below in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it so we know. And of course, subscribe to us here on Visual Politics, as well as hitting the little bell down there so you receive notifications and don't miss any of our videos. All the best, and I'll see you next time.